So we're here at the iZone and uh, hi, so who are you? Uh, hi, I'm Praneet. I'm a graduate student at UNC Chapel Hill. So this is the uh, University in the... North Carolina. North Carolina. Uh, and what at Chapel here? Hill. So this is a, a variable focus augmented reality display. So a probably, variable focus? Yeah. So um, the current day available augmented reality displays like Microsoft HoloLens or Meta or you know even the current day Magic Leap, they all show virtual imagery but they all are snapped to a specific depth plane and that causes a lot of discomfort in viewing virtual what imagery. What does this do when you open and then close it? Uh, so this is a variable focus single optic AR display. So you can see that there's a deformable mirror membrane which is changing its shape and the change in shape is coming from uh, air pressure. So this is air? Yeah. So, uh, so there's a flat surface, there's a membrane and then the shape is changed uh, based on the air pressure and each curvature corresponds to a specific depth for virtual imagery in the so it's world. very important to have variable uh, focus because you, when you do AR, you want to focus here or there or what? Yeah. Uh, you want to see things uh, different places in the field. Right. So th there's something called uh, accommodation and virgins conflict that is basically arising from virtual imagery snapped to a specific depth plane. And so you'd have to roll your eyes like that to fuse the images. And especially that's a very big problem in AR displays because say you want to focus at three meters but all the uh, virtual imagery are you know, snapped to one meter. And so you cannot focus both real and virtual imagery at the same uh, time. So it's important that virtual imagery are at appear at different spatially registered depths. And so variable focus becomes very important. Did you see the keynote? Uh huh. I've been hearing so about. Guy, right? I've you were been saying he's trying to do something for VR, right? Right. Are you doing for AR? Uh, so, I'd say VR. It's in some sense it's easy because you're not looking at real world. So it's like completely blanking real world, and then you know you're sort of okay with doing anything in the rendered, uh, you know, in the, in the totally virtual world. But when it comes to AR, it becomes important that you also have a unobtruded uh, you know, view for real world. And uh, what is the demo right here? Um, it's a it's the same demo as you can see in the video. Uh, it is a, a, a an automatic implementation of this static prototype. So we, there are a bunch of electronics that is controlling the air pressure, and then uh, there's a rendering pipeline that renders uh, according to you know the set curvature of the membranes and uh, these membranes and the the effect and the, the quality of the optics and everything how's it compare is it good enough like everything will be possible with this or oh yeah it's currently in the pr prototype or a proof of concept stage but it's not very far from being into a real product i'd say yeah uh, we currently hit something uh, like you know Theoretically, 12 to 15 cycles per degree to be currently available in series. But this could go as high as 30 cycles per degree uh, with using correct light engines. And it's, I'd say it's not very far from reality. So right now it's it's working. It's, it's active, this one? Uh, this one's not active. Fortunately, while shipping, yeah. we broke our Arduino board and working on it. So uh, would you need to have eye tracking or something like that to make it the final product? Or? Oh yeah, this definitely would need eye tracking because you know you would want to set the virtual image depth based on where you're looking. And so that should definitely come from binocular eye tracking. And what you're showing right here uh -huh. uh, with this air, is it possible that it can be fast enough that uh, you know, you can be usable? Oh, sure. Um, so we're currently working on a version uh, which uses very fast linear actuators to uh, quickly change the air pressure. And that could go, you know, something like 500 millimeters per a millisecond kind of uh, So if actuators. some kind of billion dollar company comes over here and says, here is a billion dollar, can you make it work in like six months? Is it possible or um, impossible? Six months probably would be like a... A, a very hard target, to, especially to shrink down the uh, form factor. Like yeah, but probably in a in a year, it shouldn't be very far from reality. A year. A year, I think. Are you gonna do it? Um, what's, sure. What's, what's next for you? Uh, so there are a couple of other things which we are trying to target. Uh, currently, the membrane shape is a it's it's a uniform thickness membrane. 
Uh, so the shape of membrane is not locally controllable. So we're working on a version where we can, you know, hit uh, locally controlled target shapes of the membrane and a couple of other problems related to these things. All right, make uh, things smaller, more compact, or uh, make things more compact in a very good head-mounted form factor, not actuators sticking out, and. So the aim of all of uh, you know all these people as a community is to shrink these AR displays to form factor of uh, eyeglass. You want your glasses to have this stuff. In. Yes, and, and about, so what, what this is this PCB here? Uh, it's a display. So this display is reflected off of the membrane, and that is relayed into your eyes. So the virtual image which you see is actually coming from this display. So the uh, you know effectiveness of the resolution of the overall display is basically dependent on which ki what kind of display you're using. So the higher the display resolution is, the better your images. How big is your team? You have some other. Oh, we have a huge collaboration. Uh, we were collaborating with Nvidia. We were collaborating with Saarland and MPI, and of course UNC Chapel. Hill. How many students? Um, so currently we are a team of four students, uh, three postdocs, and three professors. Which one are you? Uh, sorry. Oh, I'm a student. I'm a graduate student. So, uh, so how long time are you going to be studying this? How long is it next? So it's part of a PhD dissertation. Uh, you know, I'll probably show David. Yeah. David Dunn is a PhD student who whose PhD dissertation is this primarily. All right. So did he get the PhD with this? Oh yeah, he's going to graduate probably next year. Cool. And you? Uh, I just finished my second year. I'm going to graduate maybe in two or three years. <laughs>